Hi, my name is Ashley Maliarakis. I'm the spine program navigator for the hospital. Uh, I put together a couple slides for you today and hopefully take some of your time to explain to you about what to expect when you come into the hospital. Um, it can be a nerve wracking, but I assure you we've got it all taken care of. So here's what to expect. This is my role in the spine navigator. Sometimes we call me the spine coordinator. Same, same, I'm helping to coordinate your care. Uh, I've been a nurse for 11 years, 10 of which I spent on this on the surgical floor where you'll be going alone. Uh, so I have lots of experience with spine patients in the past, and now it is my specialty, and I love it. Um, so I work with eight spine surgeons. I do work for Reston Hospital. Um, I act as the liaison between the doctor and your bedside nurse. So I'm kind of the in-between person. I'm the eyes and ears for the doctor when they're not there. So I'm an excellent resource, as well as the person that kind of gets things moving if need be. Um, I can help answer any questions you may have. Um, I do have close contact with them. So I'm, I'm on my phone a lot with texting and, and speaking directly to them. Um, I will ensure everything is in place to meet your needs while you're here at, at Reston. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about preparing for your stay at Reston Hospital, what to expect during your stay, uh, discharge planning, and we're gonna go over a little bit of the physical and occupational therapy side. What to bring to the hospital, lots of patients ask this. So you are in the gown most of the time, but if you don't want to be in a gown, you are able to bring in loose fitting clothes. Um, I would suggest for your sake to not bring in clothes during the stay, just because there's lots of tubes and wires and cords, which we will go over. So it's some, it's a lot easier just to stay in the gown and just bring a pair of clothes to go home in. So loose fitting, so you'll be comfortable. Um, regular toiletries, if you have personal preferences for toiletries, we do have toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, shampoo, conditioner, lotion, those kinds of things, but everybody likes to use their own and it is hospital grade stuff. Um, relaxation, distraction, things such as music, electronics, uh, people like to use that and it's a good diversion activity for when you are having pain. Uh, favorite pillow or neck roll, uh, you are having spine surgery. Uh, so your own personal preference for what you like at home, you feel free to bring that in. Our pillows are there and all, but they are hospital grade pillows. So sometimes you need about six of them to get to your comfort level. If you are a sleep apnea patient, please um, know that we do have the capability of having a CPAP here. You do not need to bring your machine in. Just bring your mask that you use. Um, that way you're most comfortable during the night. If you forget, don't worry, we do have masks. It's just nice when you bring your own. Um, and then really anything else that will make you feel comfortable. Sometimes people put pictures on the wall. Sometimes people have uh, little drawings. It's, it's up to you. I've seen coloring books, whatever you want to bring in to make your stay as comfortable as possible, please do so. Once you arrive, so this is the morning of surgery, please come two hours prior to surgery. I'm sure you've already heard that. Um, you will be entering through the pavilion two entrance. Forgive us, we are going through a lot of construction right now to try and make the hospital even better for you. So the Pavilion 2 will be the, the best way to go in. They do have free valet parking, so you just need to let them know you are here for surgery and it will be free and validated. Um, there is also a garage across, across the street right from across the entrance to the Pavilion 2 that you can utilize and that is free as well. It's just a longer walk. Um, so when you come in through the doors, the sliding doors, you'll go right to your right to that desk and that's where you'll check in for your surgery. Uh, they do have people there standing to help kind of guide you. However, when you're coming first case of the day, super early, um, there's not as many people there to help you. So um, just go to your right straight, there's the desk there to check in. Once you sit down in the waiting room, the pre-op holding will come to get you. This is where you're going to change into your gown, get your IV placed. They'll probably put on some compression stockings, and that's where all the talks will start with anesthesia, with your surgeon, and with your nurse. So what are, what are your family and friends doing? So they may wait in the surgical waiting area. Uh, we do have a tracker uh, system by the, by the desk, by the volunteer desk, that they can track you throughout your day. 
or if they need to leave, they can do that as well. Um, just make sure they leave their contact info for the surgeon to get a hold of them. Since you won't really be able to remember what how your surgery went after, they will notify your, your person waiting about how everything went to update you. Uh, there's free wireless access. There's a coffee shop right there. Um, we do try and make it as comfortable as possible. So after your surgery, you're going to be going to the PACU. That's the post anesthesia recovery unit. Um, so that is directly after your surgery. This is where we get you waking up. So you're closely monitored by the nurse with your vital signs. You're getting pain managed there. You typically stay here for about one to two hours. Um, then you are transferred to the surgical unit where I reside. Um, so once you're stable and they deem that you are able to um, come to the floor, you will get off of the stretcher and walk to your bed. This happens with physical therapy and either, and sometimes with both, the PACU nurse, the floor nurse, and or a tech. So there is plenty of people there to help you. You are drowsy, sometimes people are nauseous, but the majority of people do very well walking. I know it sounds like a, a long shot to walk the day of your surgery, but people do really well. This is clinically proven to reduce many serious complications after surgery. And uh, it seems like we're reducing lengths of stays already by having people walk more. Um, every once in a while, there might be a bed rest order. Um, some of you will be having a second stage of your surgery. So if the surgeon deems after the first surgery that he wants you in bed all day, that is what will happen. We pay attention to the orders of the doctor. So if he wants you in bed, that is what we do. Patient rooms, we're just going to cover those um, a little bit. The pictures you see are actually uh, the our rooms. So that is kind of what an average room looks like. They're all private. Uh, we do have an open visitation policy. So feel free to come in and out with your family. and Your family and friends will feel free to come in and out as, as, as they please. However, we do limit your overnight person to just one. Um, we do have the chair. I'm not sure if you can see behind the little bedside table there. It does pull out into a bed, and there's also recliners in the room as well. So we do try and make your family or your friend, whoever's staying with you, as comfortable as possible. It is not a requirement anybody stays, just so you know. We do take good care of you. In fact, we're in there so much, you'll probably be sick of us by the time you leave. Um, we are a non-smoking campus, just so you're aware. Um, we do have a white commu communication board in every room. That's a picture underneath of the room. Um, that is the excellent way for us to communicate with you. This is where the nurses will write their name. I will write my name. Um, anybody with you in your care will, will write their name and number up there. Um, we also put things like questions you may have, goals uh, that you have during your stay. So it's, it's a great communication tool. The recliner chair, like I said, is there. Um, sometimes people every once in a while like to sleep in that chair. We will do whatever it takes to, to help make you as comfortable as possible. And again, free Wi-Fi access for you too. So there's a phone. We do, it's attached to the wall. It's like your home phone. Uh, that, that is the way you're going to be able to get a hold of your nurses, me, um, and anybody else. Everybody has an extension. Uh, we are easily reachable. So it will be, there's a star, there's a little asterisk. That is the number, that is what you push, followed by the number. So it's usually star one, star nine, and then a four digit number. Um, outside lines, you call, there's no five zero, no nine to get out. It's just you type in the numbers normal. Everybody usually has cell phones these days. So if they're calling outside, they typically use their cell phone, but it's there if you need it. Uh, call bells, we have them attached to every bed as well as on the bed, um, and they'll, that'll be explained when you come to the room, what to push, how to get a hold of your nurse, those things, how to use the phone. Um, and like I said, the TV is there. We do give you a folder at the beginning of your stay that will have a list of what each channel is. So what to expect post-op. When you get to the floor and after you've walked to the bed, you will get your vital signs taken every hour for the first three hours. Um, so I apologize, you know, we have to we do have to wake you up for these vital signs, uh, but it's just for your safety and to make sure that you are um, where you need to be. Your blood work will be done as well very early, so about 4 a.m., 4.30. Why is this? They do this because the amount of patients we have, but most importantly, so that the, everything is resulted by the time the physician gets there. 
the physician or the PA or both do visit fairly early. So they can start as early as 6.15 in the morning and they can run all the way up till 9 a.m. So between the hours of 6 and 9, you will, you will see a, a physician assistant or your doctor or both. Uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, they will typically work with you, uh, with everybody. Um, sometimes our cervical patients do not need a physical therapy, um, so that's the exception to the rule. Uh, we also have a case manager that will help you with any equipment needs or placement needs for when you go home. So the nurses are all in navy blue scrubs. So you see navy blue, you know nurse. Uh, the technicians, the nursing technicians, are in green. So when you see green, you know those are techs. What's the difference? The nurses are the only ones allowed to give you medications, make decisions with the doctor on your behalf, and touch the IV pumps. Um, the most the tech can do is silence the pump, but if it is beeping, it's the nurse that needs to adjust it. Um, and if those things happen, IV pump is beeping, please just give the nurse a call. Um, we can't always hear it. Um, we are getting a, a system soon that will alert via phone, but until then, just give them a ring. That, that beeping is kind of frustrating. So the sooner they know about it, the sooner they can get to you. So what do the techs do? The techs can do everything that are, is involved with the acti activities of daily living, such as walking. They empty your drains. They help you with your hygiene. They give you food, water as needed, any supplies, and they're the ones that take your vital signs. Um, they are a vital part of, of your stay. They do help a lot. So um, if you're unsure of who's doing what, just give us a call. Somebody will be there to help you. Um, the nurse leader, I am one of the nurse leaders on the floor. You can see on my badge. Um, we'll, one of the nurse leaders will be there to visit you every day. Um, we're actually implementing now somebody to try and come see you on the weekends, in fact. So there's several nurse leaders on the floor. We have a total joint coordinator, myself as the spine coordinator, um, the, a director of the unit, and a bariatric coordinator. And um, we also have a nurse manager. We are adding to these nurse leaders, so like I said, so that we can do some weekend rounding um, and make sure all your needs are being met as they should. Nancy Susco, you might see her name up there. She typically you you will go to the west wing of the surgical unit, and she is the director there. Pain. This is the number one thing to expect post op. You will you will have pain. Um, no amount of drugs that we can give you are going to stop that. Um, some people get lucky and they have very minimal pain. Our goal is to make your pain tolerable. Um, spine surgery is extremely painful but we do our absolute best to try and make this as tolerable as possible for you. Um, and if it's not tolerable, please give us a call. Our goal is to not have you in agony. Um, nobody wants to be there. Um, we do use a variety of medications to get you here. We um, very, very limited use of any kind of IV narcotics. So you'll be mostly managed with oral uh, regimen. So you'll have multi different drugs that hit different receptors to give you a, a whole uh, holistic approach to the pain. So it's not just narcotics anymore. We add different things like muscle relaxers or nerve pain medicine, Tylenol, and all of these meds together give you, give you the best control. Um, even with these meds, sometimes people are afraid to call the nurse and say, hey, I'm still hurting. It, it's not the same formula for everybody. So even after we've given you the meds, if you're still really hurting, please just call. We're, this is what we, we do. This is what we're here to help you. Um, just there's no such thing as pain-free. So just communicate whatever you, you may need. This is what we're here for. Not a bother. Uh, equipment. So what will you have on you? Not every patient will have these, but most will have um, sequ sequential compression device, uh, that's probably 99% of our patients have these. These little these little sleeves go on your legs. They blow up and down with air to help prevent blood clots. Um, so those are important. You also will have stockings underneath of those also doing the same thing. The more you get up and walk around, the less of a need you, you have for the, the pumps. So it's not like they're going to be on 24-7 um, because they do need to be removed while you walk. But while you're laying in bed or definitely sleeping, you will have these pumps on your legs. 
It's a love-hate relationship. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Um, IV pump, another love-hate relationship because it's great when it works, but when it's beeping, then it can be a little annoying. Um, like I said, just call if it starts beeping. That typically means either uh, you need an extra bag or the flow has stopped. So we do need to know that as soon as possible. Uh, you will have a urine catheter in some cases. Not everybody has one of these. Um, they, the, they have a catheter in order to prevent complications during surgery. So sometimes it is medically necessary. We do try and get these out as soon as possible. So, so typically the first day after the latest surgery you've had is when it will come out that morning. Plus we need to make sure you're moving around and that everything is good from the surgery. Um, telemetry monitors. Sometimes we have a little portable telemetry monitor to keep an extra um, look at your heart, uh, make sure rhythms are good. Uh, not everybody has these, but it, it is there in case we need them, in case the doctor wants them. Oxygen sensors. A lot of, most everybody has these as well because you are getting anesthesia and a lot of drowsing medications. We like to monitor you for about 24 hours uh, with the oxygen sensor. Um, oxygen. There's tubes that go in your nose. Um, the, this will be on and off as needed. If you don't need the oxygen, we will not put it on you, but it is there if we need it. Um, as well um, as drains, not everybody gets a drain during surgery, um, but if you do, um, that either goes in the front or the back um, or your neck, wherever the surgery was, and we will be managing that. Nutrition, so food, right? The best part of everything. You will definitely start with some sort of clear liquids or ice chips. Um, we have, because of anesthesia slowing down the gut, we have to go slowly and make sure we don't just give you solid food before you're ready. So just as you're waking up, your stomach is waking up too. So we like to trial your belly with ice chips or clear liquids to start with. And then as you tolerate and have no nausea, um, we advance as, as the doctor allows us to. Our Nutrition is called expressly for you, so there is a menu each person gets um, that when you are on solid foods or full liquids, which is more creamier versions of liquids like creamy soups and ice creams and puddings, um, there is a menu for those items that you can request. So you will put your order in. So coming up from the floor, that first order, I encourage people to usually call once you get the switch over to the new diet. Um, the number is on the menu, and we can help you as well, um, but you'll pick out what you want. You just call and tell them. From then on out, you have a patient ambassador that will personally come to your room and ask you what you want for your meal, just like you would at a restaurant. Uh, do, do notify your, your uh, PA, which is your physician assistant, or your nurse of any dietary special needs. Um, and me doing this video, my contact information will be at the end if you do have uh, special requests for these things, you can always uh, shoot me an email or give me a call. Um, and we do actually have gluten-free menu now available as well. Keeping you safe. So that is our number one priority. This is why we bother you so much. Uh, the A nurse or a tech or usually comes in about every hour uh, to check on you to anticipate your needs for bathroom or um, food, water kind of thing. Uh, call, don't fall. You'll see that posted everywhere. Definitely do that. Um, there's wires and cords and drugs that you're taking that can alter mentation. Please don't don't risk it. Please just call us. It's not a bother. Even if you have you're one of these that has to go every couple hours during the night. This is what we're here for. Um, connections to the equipment, like I said, can easily trip you up. So and we need to help you with that. We don't want you bending to remove the pumps yourself. And plus, usually an extra person is needed for that IV pump. So just always call when in doubt. We will be there as soon as possible. Um, we do have fall, fall sensors or fall alarms on the beds and in the chairs uh, that we activate if you are deemed a fall risk. Um, these are, again, for your safety. Um, and they can be a little annoying. So on a patient that's doing very well, um, even if they are deemed a fall risk, uh, you can say, I don't want this anymore. I don't want the alarms on me. And we have a form that you sign that says you are not going to be monitored with these alarms anymore. And then you're free. <laughs> Physical occupational therapy. So like I said, you'll first encounter PT at the doorway of your room when they walk with you to the bed. You might not remember them, but they are, they'll be there. Um, 
uh, you're walking about approximately 25 feet from that stretcher to the bed that first day. Um, it does depend on the day and time of your surgery and your medical status at the time, whether uh, or not how far you walk and um, if you are walking at all. Uh, they'll work with you daily. It is just one time a day. So the physical therapist is an important part of your care because they help determine your placement um, home or in a facility or if you need equipment. Um, they're the eyes and ears of the doctor for where they think uh, is the best place for you after surgery. If you don't have support people at home, if you have too many stairs or the home situation's not okay, um, then we look into other options other than home. So occupational therapy is also a um, asset to your care. Um, not everybody gets occupational therapy, but they're, they're in charge of the activities of daily living. They kind of help go over how to go to the bathroom, how to navigate the stairs, how to put your socks on, how to get dressed, that kind of thing. So they're, they're more focused on activities of daily living and the tips and tricks for those. Um, Going back to the PT session, they will be doing transfers. So bed to chair, uh, chair to walking. Uh, they will show you how to safely transfer, how to safely sit. They'll assess your gait, your mobility, your balance, and that will determine your home status. Uh, they will also be working with nursing on pain control. So they will make sure that you have been appropriately medicated before you get to work. Day of discharge. Physical therapy, like I said, is a big component of this. Um, what your graduation level is, is being able to do the stairs and car transfers. So as you see in the picture, that is a real live back patient, um, and she is assisting him with the, the stairs and practicing up and down. If you're one of these that has many, many stairs in their home, we can also take you into the actual, an actual stairwell to, to practice more. Uh, as you notice, the little belt she's holding, that's a gate belt that is used for your safety so that we make sure that um, you're as safe as possible whenever we are moving you. Uh, car transfers, that, that little picture at the bottom is an actual pseudo car that we have so we practice safe getting in and out of the car because one of the biggest things is no twisting um, after a, a back surgery. Um, OT will come and see you, they have discharge if needed. Otherwise, um, if you are cleared, uh, then you don't have to work with them. Um, but obviously any questions or any extra help you may need, we can always give them a call and have them work on something with you. Um, as far as outpatient physical therapy, you, you won't be doing anything for that first week or two before you see the doctor. Your only job is to walk, walk, walk. So no physical therapy until the two week appointment. Equipment for home, um, some of you will need this, some of you already have it. Um, I also add in the email to let me know if you, you do already have a walker, then we don't have to worry about it, or if you know you'll definitely need one. Sometimes people don't know if they're gonna need equipment till the day of the surgery or while they're here at the hospital, and that is completely fine. That's why case management works with you, physical therapy works with you, and I work with you to make sure you have the equipment you need to safely go home. So. With the walker, it's usually a front wheeled walker. So as you see in the picture, um, that's the safest walker to use. You can get these um, ahead of time if you would like. Uh, Amazon is a great place. They're probably the cheapest. Walmart as well. Um, and you can kind of price shop for those. Three-in-one commodes. Those are the little potty chairs. So those uh, some people like to go home with because of the handles on, on the side. So that little basin comes out of the bottom and you can stick it right over your current toilet so that you have leverage when you go to sit down. Um, the walkers are not always fully covered and this is why uh, people choose to, to buy them on the outside. Um, and it's okay if you don't know right now, that's what we're here for. Uh, discharge process. So a decision is made for going home on multiple different factors. Um, drain output is one, your mobility is one, uh, just a general of a medical standpoint of how you're doing. Um, once all those little boxes are checked, then you're allowed to go home, um, but it is a collaborative decision. So we don't, it's a, the reason why we see you every day is to make sure you are in a place where you are safe to leave. Um, 
So current living situation is important. Like I said, having a support person there, if you have help at home, um, what your mobility is like, how your progress with PT is going. If physical therapy says, hey, they were really wobbly on the stairs, I'm not sure, I think they need one more day, you'll stay. Um, otherwise, you'll be cleared to go. Um, if you need additional help other than home, if, if these things aren't lining up, like not, not enough support, not enough uh, stability with, with walking around, then we look into things like home therapy, um, skilled nursing facilities, or acute rehab. Discharge instructions. Those will all be reviewed day of discharge. So the doctor will come in that morning, the, the PA will come in that morning and say, hey, good news, you're going to be able to go home today. They'll tell you things such as how to take care of your dressing, what to do with your braces, things like that. Don't worry, we write it all down. So you will have that when you go. You do sign on a piece of paper before you leave. There's actually multiple papers you sign on, but uh, it's kind of like buying a house. We have to make sure that you understood everything before you go. Um, when the doctor comes, this is one of the, the biggest questions. When the doctor comes in the morning and says, you're free to go, that doesn't mean in five minutes. The doctor is typically seeing multiple patients, so it takes them a minute to get back to the computer to actually put the order in. So once they see all of their patients, then they sit down, put the order in for each patient, then I will work on your discharge or your nurse will work on your discharge we will generate the paperwork, which doesn't take very long. It only takes about 10 minutes to do the paperwork. And then we will bring that in and you'll be on your way. Um, but I just, I, I like to, to warn people that sometimes after the doctor says, hey, you're good to go, it, it could take a couple hours just because we're waiting for him to finish his end of things before we let you go. Also, physical therapy um, is something that usually you work with before leaving. Sometimes you have to urinate from having the catheter in. So as long as the boxes are checked, then you can go. So it's not always just automatic. Some people it is, but not everybody. Um, so how to contact your sur surgeon will be on there, when to contact them, we'll review signs and symptoms of infection, what's expected, what's not. Um, and of course, you know, we're all about infection prevention. So when you go home, pets and things, just for the first couple days, try and keep them away from your incision um, and from you just because they can be a tripping hazard. Um, and they're excited. They want to see their mom or dad. So um, it's just a good idea to kind of stay away for just, just for a little bit. Um, always wash your hands um, after, after playing with the animals just because, um, again, that's another source of uh, infection. And then, of course, report any wounds that are near your incision. Sometimes people get marks or blisters from the tape, um, which can be normal, but it also could be skin breakdown. So you just want to make sure you let the surgeon know if you're starting to see something strange. Prescriptions. Sometimes uh, patients will get these in the office so that you're all set before you go. But most of the time, we are prescribing day of discharge. So um, some physicians will e-prescribe. Not everybody has this capability. Um, so if we, they don't e-scribe them, we will give you paper prescriptions that you will go out and fill. With all these crazy rules now on opioids, uh, it's usually a two-week um, supply. And some of the insurances are now even saying it's just a week supply that you're allowed to have. But no worries, we will make sure you have the pain medicine you need to go home. Um, the offices are used to doing the authorization for the drugs. So if there is an issue, we work to make sure you have the right medicine before you leave. Mm -hmm. Reminders. So pay close attention once you get home to your environment. Things that you didn't think of anymore, even just getting out of bed is different. So, you know, you're going to hear the word log roll probably a hundred times, um, you know, because of that twisting. So make sure you pay attention to now the height of your bed. Um, how low is your toilet? This is why we suggest sometimes the commodes. Um, sometimes people have very high beds and, that, and they have to think of that before they, they come in. Um, some people like recliners to sleep in. If you have a recliner, if you're comfortable in that, that's okay, but it's not necessary to get before you come into the hospital. So no BLTs, not the sandwich, bending, lifting, and twisting. It's just an easy way to remember, BLT, BLT. Um, so bending, deep bending is what we mean. Obviously, you need to take care of yourself in the bathroom and, and brush your teeth, uh, little, little movements from the hip 
okay to do. We just don't want any deep bending. Um, same thing with twisting. Sure, you can turn your head to look if you've had a cervical surgery, but we don't want any big hyperextensions up and down or left and right. Uh, same thing with your torso. You're going to have to get used to kind of moving your whole body um, instead of just twisting. No lifting more than five to 10 pounds. Um, roughly a gallon of milk. Uh, be aware. I, I know some of you are super active, and this is really hard for you to do to just not pick up a sack of books or pick up your heavy bag, but it, you just have to think before you do everything, especially for the first three months after surgery. Um, keep the incision dry. You, we will go over um, incision care, when to shower, when to remove the dressing. Uh, the biggest thing after surgery and once the dressings come off and you are showering is keeping it dry. Moisture, warmth, sitting on the incision, that's it equals infection. So dry as possible. Um, First week after surgery is the absolute hardest. It's rough. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's painful. This is why we give you so many different meds when you go home um, to try and manage your, your pain as, as much as possible. Once you get to the middle of that, that second week, you're like, okay, I did do this for a reason. And I promise you, you will get your life back. Uh, it's so worth it in the end. These surgeons are just magnificent in the work they do. I love seeing everybody uh, after they're, they're healed and, and they're, they don't have the leg pain anymore. They, they don't have the debilitation anymore. It's, it's, a, it's a great feeling to see. Um, also, make sure you have stool softeners. That is a big, big thing after surgery is not having a bowel movement. Uh, the meds are very constipating. So um, kind of pick your poison. There's a whole laxative aisle. So if you're not having a bowel movement before you leave, don't go too long without having one because that can make you super miserable. Um, so Miralax is a good one. Um, the stool softeners we're giving you in the hospital is a good one. But basically, there's just so many different options um, that when it comes time, just make sure you have those. If you, that's about it for me. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me. Um, my name, my title is there. Um, my email address is probably the best way. Uh, but if you need to have a phone conversation, absolutely fine. Um, people are very scared before these surgeries. I totally get it. I've never personally had spine surgery but my mom has, and I was there by her side as well as having experience with the patients on the floor. So I just want to let you know you're in extremely good hands and rest in the hospital. We do so much to try and make your stay as comfortable as possible. We're striving towards excellence constantly, and that's what we're going to try and give you. Okay? Have a good day. Good luck.